this is anuj from chemical engineering concepts and guys uh, today onwards we are going to start our new series on uh, heterogeneous catalysis in this series you will have uh, four or five uh, small videos right in which we study we will study about the solid catalyzed reactions okay the reactions that are catalyzed by some solid or any kind of catalyst basically right so this is our first video and in this uh, we are going to introduce you to the heterogeneous catalysis in this video we are going to learn about the mechanism of catalysis okay and we are going to uh, see as well that uh, if we have the catalysis okay in the catalysis we have mass transfer and the reactions both happening so which which would be the uh, dominating okay or which would be the controlling we are going to see that in today's video okay so let's start off. so let's define the catalyst first okay so the catalyst is basically a substance that affects the rate of reaction but it itself in itself it emerges uh, out to be uh, unchanged from the process okay so basically uh, it changes the reaction rate by promoting a different molecular path okay so you can see here in this energy diagram right energy versus the reaction coordinate we have this pink uh, curve showing up the normal uh, reaction right and when we add catalyst into it the activation energy right you must know about the activation energy right the activation energy basically reduces okay so now the molecules have to have lower energy they, they have to have lower energy and they can form products right so the mechanism actually changes the molecular path actually changes by adding on some catalyst okay so catalyst can accelerate the reaction but it does not have any effect on the equilibrium right the equilibrium does not going to change is not going to change right so this is the basic um, uh, a catalyst okay the basic definition of catalyst now let's see some important properties of a catalyst a catalyst will provide a larger interfacial area right which is almost always essential in attaining a significant reaction rates so you must know that we have a large number of pores in any catalyst right so these uh, these pores actually uh, offers very large interfacial area for uh, the reactant molecules to react away right and form products okay so this will significantly increase the reaction rate and reduces the reaction time right now let's uh, see that uh, the catalyst must be very highly selective in nature okay so catalysts are very highly selective that means uh, the the specific type of catalyst will be used for specific types of reactions only okay and they are also used to control the reaction rates their amount will actually control the reaction rate so we must know about the selectivity of catalyst as well now if you see in some cases we have catalyst consist of some minute particles of active material which is dispersed over a less active substance okay so less less active means it's a catalyst and uh, some active material is there right so this active material we call as a support right and uh, these type of catalysts are known as supported catalyst right catalyst can also have small amounts of active ingredients right so if we have small amount of uh, active active ingredients so uh, we call them as the promoters okay so these promoters actually increase the activity of a catalyst okay so these are the basic properties of any catalyst right and uh, before going into uh, learning more and more about the catalyst we must know that catalyst uh, will actually uh, deactivate okay they will deactivate okay which simply means that uh, their uh, activity will decrease as the time progresses so we, we we have basically three mechanisms by which a catalyst can be deactivated okay the first one is the aging phenomena right the aging phenomena we have which means that there is a gradual change in the surface crystal structure okay so we have some uh, crystal structure okay associated with any catalyst and uh, as the time progresses due to this aging process okay uh, this uh, 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 surface uh, okay this uh, structure will change with time okay we can have poisoning as other deactivation 
uh, uh, process right in which an irreversible deposition of the substance on the oct active sites is there okay so you must see that if we have any combustion reaction okay so in a combustion reaction we have generally the coke deposition okay so this is just because of the poisoning that is happening right so it in this there is some deposition of uh, some substances okay and this will be irreversible this should be noted down right the third uh, mechanism of deactivation could be fouling or coking right which is the deposition of carbonaceous or other materials on the entire surface okay so there are two two things you must be able to differ between the poisoning and fouling in the poisoning we only have the deposition on the active sites but in the fouling we have the deposition of carbonaceous material on the entire catalyst surface right these uh, de deactivation can be very faster these uh, deactivation can be slower as well right so we have few examples of uh, uh, if it could be fast okay so we we must uh, we must have noticed about the catalytic cracking of uh, petroleum naphthas okay so if a chemical engineering is is listening to this video he must know about this right we have in the petroleum industry the catalytic cracking of petroleum naphtha we are coking okay coking in the coking we have catalyst which requires uh, it to be removed after a couple of minutes okay because we have a very faster deactivation in catalytic cracking right in the coking process we have very faster reaction faster uh, deactivation of the catalyst so if i know if i talk about the slow process okay the slow we can have poisoning okay so poisoning could be very slow if you just notice about the automotive or uh, automotive exhaust catalyst okay we have uh, in our uh, automotive engines right which gradually accumulates minute amount of lead even if uh, unleaded gasoline is used because of the residual uh, lead in the gas station uh, storage tanks okay so even if we have removed maximum amount of lead but still there will be some lead present in the gas stations that are that are storing the unleaded gasoline right so this will be this is going to be a very slow process okay so there will be a slow process of deposition of lead on the active sites of the catalyst right so these were the uh, few points regarding the catalyst deactivation now let's look at the mechanism of the catalysis right so we can have like seven steps in the uh, as the uh, in the uh, catalysis basically right so first we have the external diffusion internal diffusion and the reaction which is happening on the active site of the catalyst so first of all what will happen uh, there is a molecule a okay so we have a molecule a which is adsorbed on the surface right by the external diffusion right this is the mass transfer process the external mass transfer process now when it has been deposited here it will have to go inside the pore right that will be happening because of the internal mass transfer okay so internal mass transfer the molecule a will travel into the pore and will go on to the active site of the catalyst right it will attach to the active site of the catalyst at this point right uh, till this point we have like internal diffusion now it will deposit on the catalyst active site right here you can see in the third point there is uh, this is happening right and in the fourth step fourth step we have reaction okay so it will either react with another molecule on an adjacent site uh, which we call as the dual site mechanism okay with one coming from the main gas stream maybe like and or it simply will decompose okay so you can see the simple second second type of reaction that is the simple deco uh, decomposition of a and uh, forming b right which is a single site mechanism okay so there could be two types of mechanism which are happening on the catalyst surface right when we have b formed as a product b will travel okay b will travel into the uh, or of okay it will actually detach okay it will dissolve from the catalyst surface at least active site and will travel uh, the uh, pore okay path of the pore okay and will go out by first internal diffusion and when it has uh, reached at the catalyst surface it is it will then go uh, out as, from the external diffusion it will detach from the uh, uh, external uh, 
external surface of the catalyst and will and we can we can have our product in the outlet right so this is the basic mechanism of a catalyst how the catalyst work how the basic uh, uh, steps are there in the uh, uh, catalyst right so next we have the algorithm right the the things that we have explained in the previous slides are actually written in the form of an algorithm which you all guys can remember easily okay so first we will be having the external mass transfer diffusion of reactant okay in which this species a from the bulk of the fluid it will go on to the external surface of the catalyst pellet right next the diffusion of the reactant is there into the pore mouth okay it will travel the path inside the pore right uh, uh, to the immediate vicinity okay please remember this to the immediate vicinity of the internal catalytic surface next is the adsorption of reactant a onto the catalyst surface right this will get adsorbed on the catalyst surface the active sites of the catalyst the next thing is the reaction okay the next thing is the reaction on the surface of the catalyst which is a gives b okay you have simply seen that right the next step is the desorption of the product b which has been formed from the surface right and the sixth step is the diffusion of the product from the interior of the pellet to the pore mouth okay it will go to the surface of the catalyst right at the external surface and the last step is the mass transfer from the pro of the product from the external pellet to the bulk of the fluid okay so this these were the basic mechanism by which a, a catalytic reaction uh, uh, will be going uh, right so after this i already told you that we are going to discuss this as well right so if we have reaction as well going on and the mass transfer diffusion is also going on so how do you find out that which one is the uh, uh, rate controlling step and which one basically is the dominating step okay so this is the basic mechanism that i'm going to tell you and we will have uh, another example of it in, in our next video right and let's look at this first so we have this a okay which is the gaseous reactant and it is going to uh, react uh, uh, and give out this r product in the gaseous form and it will have uh, this b as the solid uh, we can say uh, this is a solid reactant basically right so first what will happen what will happen uh, if we are supposing b to be the catalyst what will happen actually the a component first from the gas bulk will travel on to the film okay so we are going to look here uh, from the uh, film uh, uh, perspective right we are going to have a gas film okay uh, at the outlet at the surface of the catalyst right so it will have from the cag c is the cag is the bulk uh, concentration of the gas it will go on to the surface of the film then it will travel towards the catalyst surface via this film okay so we have this film present outside the catalyst surface and uh, we have to look at that so flux of a we want to find out by diffusion we know that this is a simple equation this is a simple equation guys if you have understood about the diffusion from mass transfer you must know about this equation we have this uh, diffusion the molecular diffusion term right and the concentration change the concentration difference is there right and the distance okay the film thickness is delta x okay which will also come up and uh, if you if we combine this whole term if we combine this term this will make up to the mass transfer coefficient kg that you all know right this is a simple thing this is a flux of a which is happening by diffusion next if, if we look at the reaction okay so reaction is also happening right and if we just suppose it to be a first order a single order reaction then this is a simple step because the reaction is actually happening on the surface of the catalyst right now let's look at uh, if there is a steady state guys if there is a steady state both these rates are going to be equal right both the rate the rate of mass transfer by diffusion and the rate of reaction which is happening on the surface these both of these are going to be equal right and if we just equate them in the way which is written here okay if we equate them we will have we will have our cas that is the surface concentration so guys we are actually going to eliminate this surface concentration and we will have our final term of rate equation right so this is the surface concentration that we have got now if we just uh, substitute it in the flux term and after further simplifications which i have already done here you can see that okay 
So finally, the rate expression that we have got is this one, right? The rate will be based on the bulk, right? We do not know about the surface concentrations. Hence, we just take it in the equation and eliminate it, right? So we have two resistances here, right? This one is the resistance, which is because of the mass transfer diffusion step. And this is the resistance, which is due to the reaction step, right? So guys, uh, you can see if any one of them, we, and we have to calculate the values, right? And if any one of them is more, right? It will be dominating. The resistance will be dominating the, uh, the process through mass transfer. If for example, suppose mass transfer resistance is larger, right? Then the mass transfer step will be the slower step and will be the rate dominating step, rate controlling step basically. Right. We will go into it furthermore. We will look at some more examples on it. So you must know about which one, uh, which one of the step is rate controlling and the dominating one. Right. So I hope you have understood if the, if the resistance is more. That means uh, that step is uh, not helping uh, the reaction or the operation which is happening. Right. So this will that will be the rate controlling that will be the slower step. Right. If we have this resistance to be higher, if this reaction step is reaction resistance is higher, that means it's a slow step, right? And it will be the rate controlling step. Okay. So I hope you have understood uh, what I, we have discussed. We have discussed about the introduction of heterogeneous catalyst, and we are going to look at it in a much deeper aspect in the coming videos. So for that, you must subscribe to my channel. Right. Subscribe to our channel on chemical engineering concepts. We are here to make things simpler for you. You please do not uh, forget to hit the like button, right? And the uh, bell button so that you get the notification whenever we update and whenever we have come up with another amazing content for you guys. So thank you so much for listening. We will be meeting on the next video. Thank you so much.